Gurbhastra Hall, founder and CEO of Radium One. You're watching Elite TV on Elite Daily. I started uh, my entrepreneurial journey when I was 16. When I was growing up, I was uh, I wasn't the popular kid in school. I was uh, the introvert. Uh, I had trouble standing up in class and actually saying a presentation without stuttering. I had confidence issues, right? Uh, uh, and all of that changed because. I was able to go ahead and figure out what I really wanted to do in life. I think the, the idea of not knowing and uh, not knowing what fear was, not knowing what failure was, uh, all kind of helped me out in the entrepreneurial journey. And I think part of it was, uh, what, are, what did I have to lose? I mean, you know, I could have, uh, I could take a year off and, you know, the company was already generating revenue, you know, it's not like I just dropped out of high school and then started it. My parents would kill me if that was the case, but, uh, you know, three months at it, I was already doing $100,000 a month, and that was unheard of for my immigrant family, so uh, it was basically that kind of started my journey. People could say that at 18 I was a millionaire, you could have just checked out, and chances are there's enough people that you give that much money to at 18, they would probably go through a different path in life. I stuck to very much what I wanted, and money was never the object. In business, it's very different, right? It's not like we have the Grammys. It's not like we have the Oscars, right? In business, you're basically, uh, the value you create is your barometer of success. So unfortunately, everybody values how successful you are based on how much wealth you've created, but ultimately that's not the goal, because if that's the goal, you're never gonna go ahead and actually achieve it. So. Greed can't be part of the equation. You can't think of it as monetary value. You can't think of it that way. My third company, I mean, people uh, questioned why I was even doing it. They're like, wow, a guy like that with that much money should just be on a beach cruising, buying an island and living life. And, you know, to me, I think there's a greater purpose to life. It comes down to one key thing, understanding what fear and failure is, right? Everybody has a different definition. Everybody has a different uh, barometer on what they're willing to take. You have to be able to take so many lows to achieve one or two highs, right? And that's the, that's the recipe right there. Most people uh, look at it as you have to start off with something completely different, right? And I don't believe that. I think that you can completely start with what the value proposition currently is today, at least be at parity, or at least be at somewhat parity but then start thinking creatively on how you're gonna go ahead and solve a different problem. On a different example, look at Steve Jobs. He didn't create the MP3 player. There was, I had my first MP3 player, it was a Creative Labs funky little device. But when the iPod came out, it was like, wow, right? And that's the thing that you have to figure out is that people at the end of the day wanna be wowed and wanna be given a different angle at certain things. And that's what you can do with business, is you're solving a, you know, a, the, the same problem but just differently. That was kind of one thing I learned is, is that if you make a great impression, if you get the deal, you ask for the deal, you get whatever you want, you never have to actually go ahead and justify who you are because you've already done that. My first company only grew to about 34 employees before I sold it uh, to uh, Value Click for 40 million. And uh, the second time around at Blue Lithium, uh, I grew to about 150 before I sold it to Yahoo for 300 million. But the second time around, I really learned what a CEO was like, right? What, what, what you know, growing a larger scale outside of one office was like. Uh, and that all prepped me for what I'm doing now, which is probably my, my largest success so far. We, we did something where we were attacking a problem from a different angle. And uh, you know, for advertising uh, to evolve in the way that it has, and it's become a driving force, uh, you know, Radium One is solving a problem in such a unique way that allows us to go ahead and look at the next three, four years and really say that, wow, we're ahead of the game. And people and the market forces are, are, are heading in that direction. I've built businesses that are very different, right, than what most people look at uh, these days. You know, they look at uh, people like Snapchat or they look at Instagram and so forth. And, you know, I look at them and God bless them for the successes they've been able to have, but that's a very different model. My model is based on how much profit and loss and how much revenue you generate and so forth. So it's a very traditional model. And I think the thing that people get confused with is, is they attract the headlines so much that they forget that's headlines. 
you gotta be your own headline, right? Don't get lost in hype. If you wanna create a business just because you wanna be Instagram part two or Snapchat part two, uh, don't do it that way. Solve a different problem. Be passionate about it. Actually have an exit strategy that knows what your model is gonna be. Don't try to go ahead and chase a headline. I wouldn't have the stamina, let's just say, to build a business where I'm just talking about how many users are using it and I can't say how much money is being generated. Like, I'm so wired that way that it's, I can't even give advice on people that say, oh, I have this great app idea, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm more like, okay, well, how's it gonna make money? And are you doing that right now? In the internet, we've seen, you know, kings that became peasants, right? Companies that thrive that no longer thrive. And, uh, you know, there's one life to live here. So you gotta have fun with it. You gotta be passionate about it. And the same principles that you live on in business, you carry forward in your personal life. You, you can't define a single moment. You gotta kind of look at it from a journey perspective, right? And every entrepreneur in every story has low points. And those low points could be figuring out if I'm gonna be able to make payroll, figuring out if uh, you're gonna survive the next day. Uh, you know, and then you also have a whole new set of people that you, know, you end up enlisting to be part of your army and you know, they disappoint you or they defy you or uh, they cheat you or so forth. So you, you go through that path and all of those are different low points, but they're all opportunities to learn, right? You, you fail fast, but you learn quick. So my first two companies, I realized, my intuition realized that they were better off in a bigger company. And that would basically you know, allow it to thrive in a much bigger way. Uh, this time around, you know, the things that we're doing at Radium One, uh, I don't think of the world that way. I think of what Radium One is doing is in a redefined way uh, and based on the growth that it's headed toward, uh, you know, I would rather be the company buying companies versus the one selling to one. So, you know, the question is, is that am I the same entrepreneur as I was at 16? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, I got 15 years of uh, experience into it, uh, but uh, the purpose of why I'm an entrepreneur never changed. That's the difference. Like I said, the first thing is you got to have the stamina, right? And you got to be passionate about something, right? And you got to surround yourself around people that want to see you successful, that want to go through your journey. And you got to be able to stomach that journey.